Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I would like to talk about printed circuit boards or PCBs in short. You can find PCBs in many places and everywhere actually, from clocks to cars to even fridges or any just any electronic device should have a PCB inside it. What a PCB does is that it connects all of the device components together through some thin copper traces, which of course conducts electricity. So you can even find PCBs inside your mobile phone, your smartphone, or even you can just find it inside a digital multimeter, where all of the components are tied together. But when you start off a project for a school or a science fair, you start on a something called a breadboard. You do not just directly use a PCB. A breadboard has some holes where you can just insert some colorful wires into it. This is an example of a breadboard project. I will talk about it actually in another video. But breadboards have some problems. From them, the wires are a little bit loose. You can just uh, unplug them easily. And it can be fragile a little bit. And sometimes it can melt. So that's why you would use another thing like this. A board which is pre-drilled and you can just insert the wires into it and solder it from the other side where there is copper. By this, the problem of wires or loose wires will be get solved. But in my opinion, you will get another big problem, which is um, you will have to squeeze a lot of wires into a very small place. This is a board I took about roughly 4 hours to make it and you can see that's just not pleasant to look at and it take of course a lot of um, work and everything. What I actually prefer to do when I actually test on a breadboard is that I make my own PCB at home using just tools I have at home and I will actually make a full series on how to make your own PCB at home from designing to everything and I will talk about this series in the middle of this video. You can see that making PCBs at home solves actually all of the problems. You can design your own layout, you can make anything you would like, you can make the copper traces a little bit thick too, so that it can um, carry full powers and do everything. But the, sometimes I just use the pre-drilled boards if I'm just busy or lazy to get on a computer and design my own board. And sometimes of course I fail actually in making the PCBs. I want to talk about a very important thing at the moment, which is making PCBs is not actually uh, all the time safe. Something like this, which plug in into a 220 volts or 120 volts AC, can be dangerous because it's just don't, doesn't have any isolation above it. And sometimes your own design of the PCB can affect your circuits. This is an FM radio transmitter, and it's affected severely by your own PCB. I will of course talk about the problems like this in my full series. There is another thing you could do, which is actually I find it super fun, but it's just very expensive, which is making PCBs outside your country or just buying it from a Chinese factory. You send out your design and the factory will just send you the manufactured PCB. Um, actually, it's not um, uh, costly in making, but just in shipping. It's um, very expensive in shipping, at least for me in Egypt. Uh, of course, you can see that using a PCB, still there's a lot of um, junk uh, wires, but uh, believe me, without this PCB, this uh, thing will just be uh, 10 times more uh, worse than it now. Normally when you get to make a, a PCB at home, you will just get some PCBs like this. Uh, just have a copper from one side and some um, fiberglass from the other side. Although sometimes you can get two copper from the two sides, but I will not talk about this at all because it's a little bit uh, hard to make a manufacture. Before I start in talking about my series, I want to show you actually my first PCB I have ever made. Well, I was uh, in year 9, I think, and unfortunately it didn't work, but I can show it to you. I'm actually proud of it. 
there is another way you could do um, boards rather than PCBs, which is a method called wire wrapping. You would just wrap a wire um, through the pin itself, around the pin itself, using some guns and such things, but I don't have any uh, experience in it. In the first part of my series, I'll start talking about how to design your PCB from scratch. I will also talk about the softwares you could use either online or just local on your computer. But I would like to introduce to you the process of making PCB. First, you make something called a schematic design on the program you will have, and by this you just define the connection you will have at the end. But the most important design you will make is called the board design, where you assign the width and the length and the size of everything on your board. This is the final looking board you will have at the end. And a lot of things play a role here, like the voltage you'll have on your board and a lot of things. And I will talk about all of these in full details, of course. But keep in mind that designing a PCB might take a lot of time, uh, at least at the beginning. But I'll tell you all of the tricks you'll have um, to just fasten everything and everything will be okay. And sometimes you could just leave uh, the computer to do all of the stuff and just go relax on the sofa. But also sometimes you will fail in routing or connecting two pads together through the physical copper traces and you'll have to attach uh, an external wire you'll have to solder after you make the PCB itself. And I will talk about how to make this in a, in a better looking way, not just ugly wires just flying everywhere. Then in the second part, all after the designing the PCB, I will talk in complete about the components, uh, sorry, the layout of the components and uh, calibrating the board and cutting the board and preparing the board, like cleaning and everything. I have uh, I have made about 30 or 20 PCBs before and I have uh, lots of experience with them and I know really all of the problems. but. I will tell you all of the problems, of course, so you do not fall on them like I fooled the first time I got introduced to. Then after um, preparing the PCB and cutting it and making it ready for the production, I will talk about the process of tuner transfer, which is copying the ink from the paper, the special type paper I will also talk about, to into the PCB itself. I will talk about all of these of course in full details and I will tell you all the problems you might face and how to just uh, get away from it but uh, something like this uh, might take uh, for example a full video but a full video will be really 5 minutes or 10 minutes by maximum not more than that I will try to show you how to keep everything just pleasant looking and not just very homemade or looking so homemade or very bad. Of course I'll talk about refining your um, production because sometimes uh, you might fail in a point but you'll have to fix it at another point and so. Then I'll talk about uh, the process of etching the PCB itself. It uh, relates to chemicals and of course safety is number one in my work so I'll tell you all of the safety measures you should consider before starting such a thing. Then I will talk about another part which is drilling the PCB itself. Drilling could be dangerous and I will talk about the drills you could use, uh, even uh, just uh, small drills, uh, I will tell you how to do it and drill using it, although you might need a fast drill to um, so the job is done just uh, very fast and easily, but I will talk also about if you do not have the right tools what to do and everything too. And this is a clip of me drilling a PCB. You should always take and consider the safety measures I will talk about because there might be particles flying everywhere in your face and just will be bad. Then I'll make a full video actually, uh, maybe 2 minute video or 5 minute video about placing the components into the PCB and refining the PCB after um, etching it because there might be some problems and I'll tell you the failures I had before so you also uh, teach and learn from it and do not make it at all. Then in the last part of my series I'll talk about soldering. I'll talk about the basics of soldering then I'll talk about how to make or solder your um, a PCB in a good looking way. 
Then I'll talk about testing, of course, of the board and getting sure that it's working. Thank you for reaching up till this point. I hope you liked the video. If so, please subscribe to the channel so that all of my new videos you see them. And thanks for watching and have a nice day.